Now, here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. Two more wins for the Cowboys this week to go 6-1 and one on the season. 23 straight wins at home, Coach, but it sure would be nice to get everybody healthy and playing at the same time. We played uh, extremely well against Michigan State earlier in the week, and then uh, it was a little more difficult against uh, Jackson State, but we are kind of banged up. Uh, Jerome Lambert did not play uh, in our most recent game, and Keontae Roberts didn't play uh, earlier, and uh, he... Uh, He's still not at full speed. That ankle is really bothering Keontae, but I thought he displayed a lot of courage the other night uh, when he knew that Jerome was not going to see any action. And he went out there in the last few minutes of that ball game, the entire ball club competed. And had they not, uh, we would have gone down to the first loss to a non-conference opponent about 59 games. I think that streak's at 59 now. But we have one more game, uh, Bill. Uh, Saturday afternoon against uh, Arkansas State. This is the week we play all the state schools, it seems like. <laughs> And Dickie Nutt, uh, who was an assistant coach here, uh, brings his ball club in. And uh, I know that uh, it'll be a game that uh, he'll have them uh, playing very well. They played very well against University of Missouri uh, last week, and uh, we're only beaten by eight points. So they, they do have good talent, and uh, we do still have some tickets available. So I hope our fans will get out there. It's a 2 o'clock game, and uh, it would be a good Christmas present for our players and coaches and all of Oklahoma State fans if we can go to the holidays with a 7-1 record. Well, we'll take a look at that, talk more about that, and take a look at Michigan State when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Let's go right to Gallagher. I have a Michigan State coach, a very tough team coming in. Very tough team. Uh, the record was very deceiving from the standpoint they had probably played about as tough a schedule as anyone in the country. And they did have uh, four losses, but uh, they were against quality teams. And uh, really a, a wonderful group of athletes. You know, they basically got their whole front line back from a year ago when they beat us in East Lansing on a last second shot. Uh, they lost their two great guards, uh, Respert and, and Snow. And I think right now their, uh, their guards uh, need to mature a little bit and get some experience. But they'll certainly uh, win a lot of ball games in the Big Ten. And, they played a zone most of the time. Uh, it went to a man late in the ball game. But that was one of the things that I was most concerned about was rebounding this ball game. There's Jerome Lambert doing what he does best. He's a terrific rebounder and it, the shot's missed and he gets a put back. But they had been beating their opponents by about 11 rebounds a game. And I told our squad that one of the keys would be if we could uh, limit the number of second opportunities, and we were able to do that. They only had, uh, I think, eight offensive rebounds, and we had 13, and we held our own on the boards 34 to 33. Might be a good time to talk about Jerome. You've talked about his injury. He did not play at all against Jackson State. What's his status right now? Is it going to be day-to-day? -day? I think it's a touch-and-go situation. I think it will be day-to-day, -day and uh, it's just something that... Uh, we think he got it injured in the Michigan State game. Uh, we think that he must have fallen or he got hit, and he's not aware of it, but uh, the knee really did swell up uh, the day after we had played the Spartans, and he could not practice And on uh, Tuesday, then on Wednesday, when we played uh, Jackson State, uh, he couldn't practice. There's a nice move by Kevin Miles, and Kevin played his best game since uh, becoming a Cowboy in, in this game against Michigan State. He came up with some big rebounds, a block. He did everything for you. Uh, he, uh, and, and the crowd helped so much in this ball game. Uh, R.W. McCorders, uh, the outstanding freshman football player who's been on our squad now for about a week, came in, and he really brought the crowd alive and really spearheaded our, our run there in the second half when we pulled away from Michigan State. There's Maurice Robinson. He was one of three players to hit in double figures. He had 12. Adrian Peterson had 11. And... Uh, Andre Owens led us in scoring with 13, and also had seven rebounds in this game and had seven assists. So Andre had a good ball game. He's picked up his tempo a lot since the first couple games of the year, hasn't he? He's, uh, he's getting better. You know, he, we told him we didn't think he was playing as well uh, you know, this year as he did late last season. Of course, he had, was surrounded by a lot of uh, you know, outstanding players when you look at Pierce, Collins, uh, Rutherford, and, and uh, Bryant. But he's, he is playing better. You can see the zone. There's Peterson stepping up and hitting the tray. Adrian has amazed all of us uh, that he's played as well as, as he has uh, in his rookie year. He really has displayed a lot of patience. Uh, uh, you know, offensively, he doesn't take bad shots, and he's stepped up and hit the shots. And the area right now I guess he needs to improve on a little bit more is his rebounding and maybe his defense. There's that block by Kevin Miles. 
McQuarters was out there on the perimeter there in defense. How did he play in his first game? He played great. I tell you what, I thought he might be a little nervous, but uh, boy, he is a warrior. He, he wasn't nervous at all, and he came out there, and uh, I think uh, he, he hit a tray right here. I think it's coming up, but uh, he he's nice entry pass into the pivot to uh, Jerome, and Jerome hits the turnaround jumper. Both teams shot 44%, so that's an indication that both teams played very well defensively. I think the nine turnovers that uh, we had in this game was certainly a major key, and we forced them into 16 miscues. You're up there 45-37, as you see in the second half of this ball game now. The crowd really Here comes I mean, the shot right here. Here it is, yep. Well, look at his shorts. So he had different shorts on Wednesday against Jackson State. I thought he had country shorts on. Uh, I think Coach Simmons uh, indicated <laughs> that he came back from a recruiting trip, and he looked out there and he says, we're going to have to get some smaller shorts for <laughs> For RW? For RW. Yeah. yeah, there's Jerome slipping right there. Made a nice play inside. Oh, boy, he is such a factor for you on the boards, isn't he? There's a nice uh, interception. That's what we call running through a pass. Good defensive instincts on in the part of Owens, and he, it ended up in an easy layup at the other end. It's Maurice Robinson. He has really been playing well uh, offensively and leads our ball club in scoring. You know, we think about him being an inside player, but facing the basket. He's a very good shooter up to 17 feet. Well, when he works that little baseline move his too, that's pretty impressive. Well, it's late in the around. game and we've got a, a pretty good lead and Michigan State's having to fight, foul us. And that's one thing that uh, we were able to do in this ball game. We certainly converted the free throws better uh, and especially down the stretch. I think we hit 10 out of our last 12 free throws. Great hustle here. And it, you know, that was the thing that was really a bugaboo in those early games. We were shooting a higher percentage from the field than we were at the free throw line, but we've really worked on that, and we are shooting free throws much better uh, in the game against, uh, in this particular game, I think we shot 65%, but uh, in the uh, game against uh, Jackson State, we shot 71%. So. We are getting better. What's realistic for this team to shoot free throw wise? Yeah, I would hope that uh, we're not a great shooting ball club, but I think shooting free throws, this team should be able to hit 70%, I would think. That's a that's a re reachable goal. Well, there's the end of the game. Again, the Cowboys victorious. You see the final score 68-57, and Jackson State is up next when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys taking on Jackson State. Coach, you said that was going to be a tough opponent. Boy, it turned out to be. Well, there you get a look as we walk out on the uh, court with Paul Graham and Sean Sutton. We're going to have, and there's Jerome Lambert behind uh, me there with his street clothes on, but we're going to have a feature on recruiting uh, that uh, Sean and Paul will talk about a little later in the show. They came out and played man-to-man -man most of the ball game, and uh, I told our squad, this is important, if any high school uh, players are watching, you can't ever underestimate anyone. I mean, you may have a lot better talent and you may be a better ball club, but one of the great things about basketball that when five guys put the sneakers on and they go out there, uh, anything can happen. And there's certainly a lot more upsets in basketball than any other team sport. And regardless of what you say, sometimes you, you're not at the level uh, of intensity that you need to be. And I thought we started out fine, and I think we jumped out 14-4. to four. Good defense led to an easy basket in transition. And we're pressing probably more this year than we've ever pressed before. And I think that's part of coaching is adapting your talent to what you can do best. A year ago, it was hard to press when you had uh, big country. This ball club has a lot of quickness. If we were a little deeper, we'd press a lot more than we're doing right now. But uh, the press at times can be very effective, uh, making turnovers that lead to easy baskets. Good turnaround jump shot by, by Maurice. But we jumped out and then all of a sudden we, we, we hit a point where I just didn't think we played with the same zip and enthusiasm. And this ball club was very athletic and uh, they were very well coached and it was an entirely different kind of ball club than what people had seen at uh, Jackson State when they came in in the preseason NIT and played down at Norman against the University of Oklahoma. Uh, Andy Stoglin has done a great job uh, with this ball club and uh, the longer you let a team hang around, and this is one thing I was going to lead up to, th then they gain more and more confidence as the underdog, and that's what happened in this ballgame. All of a sudden, they sensed that, hey, we can play with these guys. We can play with Oklahoma State, and they certainly did, and, and in the second half, they got ahead of us, and we, it took a gutty performance that last 10 minutes of the game for us to pull this, this game out. 
This is almost their home away from home. They got here well, on Sunday. The game was yeah, Wednesday. We lost a little bit of the home court advantage because Andy had them up there uh, working out twice a day. <laughs> I mean, he was up there at Galler Ivan, so they, they knew where those rims were. You were up by five at halftime, and the second half was certainly an exciting uh, thing, the way things turned out. Well, they hit some great, uh, great shots. I mean, sometimes your defense can be good, and, and still uh, you have to give them uh, – Credit, they, they just hit some tremendous shots. They were six out of 14 from three-point range, and they shot 49% for the game. We shot 51%. Uh, nice shot 72% at the line, so there's a nice drive by uh, Andre Owens. You didn't hit a three-pointer until late in the game. Chad stepped up and hit a couple. We'll see those later on. Well, Chad Alexander was the hero as far as uh, his teammates were concerned. You know, it was the best game Chad has played since he came to Oklahoma State. And we were really thrilled. And that's one of the positive things that came out of this game because everybody's got to contribute on this ball club this year if we're going to be successful. And he came in there, and we were staggering a little bit, and he hit two trays and another uh, two-point basket. And uh, he was really the uh, one that put us back ahead when we'd fallen uh, behind. You ended up with five players in double figures. That was an impressive. You talked about their athletic skills. That was a great alley-oop there. We got the slam. You called a key timeout. Things kind of... When went your well, way after that? Well, we uh, I think one t thing too, I don't know whether it's in this film because I haven't seen this particular uh, film clip here, but uh, I think there was a strange play that happened where, they, and I really was up there. Oh, there here it is. is. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure whether Tom had it or not. And you see Andy, he's pleading his case, and I'm pleading mine. And I was, I, I, I was on the rules committee for five years, and I know the rules pretty well. And, and what happened? Uh, you can't put a player in the game after the first buzzer. In other words, there's a timeout. I think you're going to see the slow motion replay of that right here, Coach. Go okay. ahead and explain it. But anyway, they uh, they only had four players on the floor when the, the officials let the ball come in bounds. And they're supposed to count to ten players, and they didn't do it. Now here, all of a yeah, sudden, see? the guy comes running off the bench. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because I, Andre looked around and says, where's my man? <laughs> And uh, so I jumped up there and I told the officials, and they didn't even see him come off the bench. They had three mm -hmm. officials and they just they missed it. And uh, I thought they should have disallowed the basket because I didn't think at the time it was the player that had been in the game. And if that's true, then it's a technical foul. But it was a very unusual play. But I'll tell you one thing it did. Uh, it got the crowd into the game. It sure did. It sparked you guys. That's one of Chad's trays he hit right there in the corner. And here he is again. We ran a special scoring play there for Chad. and. Ran a, a double screen, and Chad's a little excited. I know his father's excited, too, because he came down last night to see the game. He plays pretty well when his mom or dad are around, doesn't he? Yeah, we may have to have him down here all the time. It's not that big a drive from McPherson, Kansas. Great hustle there, transition. Here you go. Almost got a basket. Good there. hustle play on their part, too. Uh, the, the young man came and back-tapped the ball out of bounds. and. Keontae did a nice job. We ran an out-of-bounds play there and broke uh, Keontae free underneath the hoop. There's another out-of-bounds play. He had five players in double figures. Yeah, you know, I like that bounce scoring. Mo led us with 22, and, and Adrian had 16. Uh, we had two guys with 11, Keontae and Jason, and uh, Chad had, had 10. He had the two trays we talked about and the two-pointer. Then at the buzzer, he tipped in a missed free throw. That was one of the key points of the game. It was it was down in, in Jackson State. Had to make a basket, and Pulliam must have shot that thing from 35, 40 feet. I don't feet. think that was what you would call good <laughs> yeah. shot selection I because uh, at that point, I think uh, Jackson State would have much preferred a, a, a higher percentage shot. Here's Chad. There's Chad, Chad on the, the last uh, basket of the game. The final score is 81-71. We won our sixth game, and now we uh, host uh, Arkansas State Saturday afternoon at two o'clock and. And Dickie Nutt, who played here, uh, will bring his ball club in. And like I said earlier, they're a good basketball team, and, and they certainly will be highly motivated. You know, Dickie's father and I played together. Houston Nutt, senior, played. We played together here. Uh, he had transferred. He's the only player to ever play for Adolph Rupp and Henry Ivey. Wow. He started at Kentucky and ended up here at Oklahoma State. So I hope that uh, Houston and his wife, Imogene, uh, they have a marvelous family, and all their sons are very active in athletics. So uh, it'll be homecoming over here, and I know that Dickey's going to have that ball club fired up. And again, we do have some tickets available because the students are gone for the holidays. So uh, uh, Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Okay, and we'll talk about recruiting when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show. 
Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Cowboys off to a great start this year, and the future looks bright as well thanks to a great recruiting season. Tom Dorado takes a closer look in our Off the Court feature. Well, thanks very much, Bill, and joining me here on this first edition of Recruiting Roundtable, assistant coaches Sean Sutton, Paul Graham. Now, fellas, today we're going to talk a little bit about this recruiting uh, period, the fall signing period, and this was as good a group, I would think, as OSU has added to the program in a long, long time. I think we're very pleased and very excited about the future of, of this recruiting class. And I think uh, you think about Joe Atkins as one of the best players, not only in Oklahoma, but one of the best guards in high school basketball. He's a prolific scorer, an outstanding three-point shooter, very good penetrator with, with the ball, uh, excellent passer. And we recruited him to play the point guard position as, as the future point guard for Oklahoma State. At times, he'll slide to the off-guard position because of his shooting. Then we bring, bring in a guy like Estelle Laster from Northwest Classen. Excellent athlete, plays extremely hard, a good three-point shooter, uh, terrific defender. I think both those two guys are going to have make, make for a great combination in the backcourt. And one thing we think is always important is recruiting state kids. And you think about this basketball program that's been built on guys like Byron Houston and Bryant Reeves, Randy Rutherford, Oklahoma guys. So we're excited about these two guys joining our program. Paul? Uh, Desmond Mason is another young man that's going to come into our program. I think Oklahoma State fans will be real pleased with his ability uh, as an athlete. Uh, he reminds us, and, and Sean can attest to this, of Sidney Moncrief, who uh, played at Arkansas for Coach Sutton back when he was at University of Arkansas. And, and Desmond will be uh, a very great addition to our program. And I, again, he will do some things that uh, you don't see normal people do on a basketball court. Uh, Scott Robich, of course, his background, he'll always be equated to his dad, who was an All-American mm -hmm. at the University of Kansas, uh, played on a Final Four team at the University of Kansas, named Dave Robich. And Scott Robich is 6'10", uh, power forward type player. Uh, everybody knows that it's been well documented that we needed some size in our program when we lost Bryant. Uh, we lost John Nelson, so we had to go out and find some people with some, uh, with some size and with some athletic ability. Uh, we have nine scholarship players this year, and we're going to bring in five new players. Uh, but I think the people must understand that everything is based on potential and that these kids are great high school players and they haven't proven themselves yet on the college level. But based on what we've seen them do over uh, the course of the recruiting period, we think they'll be a welcome addition to uh, Oklahoma State University. The potential of an Alex Weber, for instance? Yes. Alex Weber, is, again, is a, is a different type of big player because he's really skilled. Uh, Sean saw him play more than I did, but he can step out on the floor and shoot the three. He can handle the ball. Uh, Coach Sutton in his system, I think he likes people that can play multiple positions. Keanu Roberts, mm -hmm. Brooks Thompson, uh, you know, all his career. Sidney Moncrief and Kenny Walker, Rex Chapman, you look at his career. And Sean, you know, he can really attest to, uh, to that, but he likes people who can play multiple positions. And Alex Weber will be one of those type players. It's exciting to think what these youngsters will bring to the program next year, but even more exciting to kind of envision how they're going to mesh with the talent coming back. We have a lot of good players returning. You think about Maurice Robinson will be a senior, Jason Scare will be a junior, Keontae Roberts a senior, Marlon Dorsey, Adrian Peterson's had a terrific freshman year up to this point. So I, th I think one positive, Tom, that's going to bring us, we're going to be have 13 players out there practicing every day in 7 That'll be a change. And, and sometimes Pat and Rand are our, our, our two managers <laughs> out there practicing. So it'll be better. Well, they have to retire next year. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to hang it up, I think. Paul, we mentioned that uh, depth has been a problem seriously at Oklahoma State this year. You simply some days don't have enough players to practice. Well, it's, I mean, it has been a problem. And, and again, when we had some people leave our program for whatever reason, whether it's the NBA draft or because whether they lost their enthusiasm to play basketball, uh, we don't have enough players at practice. Uh, the other night when we were playing UTA, uh, coach looked down to the bench and I thought we were going to have to put Sean back in the game <laughs> see if he had any eligibility left. But uh, it has presented a problem. Well, next week we're going to take you behind the scenes of this part of coaching, a very highly competitive part of coaching they simply call recruiting. We'll do that on this edition of Recruiting Roundtable. We'll see you next week, and now we'll send it back to Eddie on the set. You know, Bill, Paul, Sean, and Randall Dickey did a great job recruiting, and we are excited about these guys joining our program. Quality young men, quality players. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas and all of our fans a happy holiday season. Okay, for Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Teens. We'll see you Saturday against Arkansas State, 2 o'clock tip-off. So long, everybody.